Good day, my name is Tian Gildenhuis and on this video I would like to discuss another one of those controversial subjects that is causing a lot of division and a lot of havoc in the body of Christ in this very end times that we're living in. And the title thereof is God's Earth, Flat or Sphere? God's Earth, is it flat or is it a sphere? We will have to see what the people say about this and what the Bible says about this, because it's all about what our Lord Jesus teaches us, my brother and sister. And because it's all about our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray together first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we would like to glorify you in this day, as we do every day, because you're the God of gods, you're the King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. And Father, you are our Abba Father, our almighty Father in heaven. And thank you for your love, Father. Thank you that you loved us first so that we can also love you back. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you did for us at the cross. And thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit as a comforter and to be led by the Holy Spirit. And that is why I ask again that the Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking on this video, Lord, but that your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me and that all of us will be willing to hear the truth of the Word of God. And Father, thank you that you still give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood wherever we were busy with this video. We pray that you will set up your angels all around every place and that you yourself will be a wall of fire around about your children so that every place where we are busy with this video will be a safe place and so that you alone can be glorified. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now by your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss only two points. Number one, flat earth views. Some of the views held by the flat earth society and the believers in the flat earth theory. What do they believe? And number two, we're going to ask the question, is God limited? And then, my brother and sister, you must make your own decision regarding this matter. And all in Naomi now, I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13 that says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And this is now the problem when we start to discuss certain things regarding the flat earth or the earth as a sphere where people say, but the Bible does not say it like that. Well, we will see what the Bible says. Because we must understand, God is God. He is almighty. He created the earth. He created the heavens. And He created it in a very specific way that He wanted it to be. And in Matthew 22, verse 29, we read, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. You see, this is the problem with most of us today. We err because we do not know our Scriptures. And why do we not know our scriptures? Because we do not know the author of the scriptures. We are not in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and God the Father. And because of that, we err, because we do not know the scriptures. And only when we get to know Jesus Christ personally, only then through His Holy Spirit does He give us a hunger in our hearts to start to study His scriptures for ourselves. And then we get to know the scriptures because we know the author of the scriptures, and then we get to know the power of God. The power of God in our personal lives, in our everyday lives, and also the power of God regarding eternity waiting for us. And my brother and sister, if you've not yet made a decision regarding receiving Jesus Christ as your only King and Savior, there will be a prayer at the end of this video that you can pray to also receive the Lord Jesus in your heart. And if you wonder why, I also have a YouTube video on how do I give my life to Jesus Christ? That you can also see what the Bible says. What tells us when are we saved according to the word of God? Because we must always come back to the word and not let ourselves be led by the opinions of men out there. At number one, let us now start with flat earth views. What are the views held by the people believing that the earth is flat? And at the bottom of every slide, you can see whose work I used. I always give credit to all the people whose work I used in my research regarding any specific topic. And this author writes, Flat earthers, for example, 
typically testify that when they first heard about the earth being flat, they thought it was the dumbest thing that they ever heard. The soon-to-be converts thought that they easily could disprove that the earth was flat, but they quickly realized that they couldn't. You see, if you do not believe what you see on photos given to you and all that, then yeah, what else do you have to prove that the earth is actually a sphere and not just flat? Perhaps out of frustration, they finally concluded that the earth must be flat. It never occurred to them that perhaps their education had failed them in not better preparing them for refuting the notion that the earth is flat. After all, if a person hasn't truly been taught the why of believing something rather than the what they do believe, then they are an easy prey for all sorts of odd ideas. And coming to believe that a vast conspiracy is responsible, in other words, for the people to believe that the earth is actually round while they say no, it is flat, it must be flat, and coming to believe that a vast conspiracy is responsible is a relatively small step for most flat earthers. Because, by definition, a conspiracy is a secret knowledge. And the allure of secret knowledge generally was a major factor that led them into flat earth belief in the first place. The thirst for secret knowledge is why so many people find belief in all sorts of conspiracies so appealing. We must understand Yes, there are conspiracies out there, because the kingdom of darkness works in secret. But then what they do is they turn the thing on its head and they say something that's not a conspiracy is a conspiracy. And so then people say, okay, but if this is not a conspiracy, if this is not a conspiracy, then we can't believe any of this. Okay, so let's just let it pass us by. So then they do not take note of what is actually happening in secret in the world of darkness. And people are being deceived by their millions because we do not know what the enemy is doing out there, especially in these end times that we're living in. Because my brother and sister, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is very close at hand. And I also have a YouTube video that you can watch on Jesus is coming again. Be ready regarding the rapture because I personally believe in the rapture of the saints prior to the tribulation and also the second coming of Christ. You can watch that because we know if we see the end times playing off right before our eyes, we see the fulfillment of biblical prophecies before our eyes. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is very close at hand. But that's why people want to have secret knowledge. You see, because if I have secret knowledge of something, I'm actually a bit better than you because I know things that you don't know. And this is where Satan catches many people also regarding the flat earth theory. But in Isaiah 45, verse 18 and 19, we read, I am the Lord. And I just want you to take note when we read in the King James Version of the Bible, L-O-R-D in capital letters like that. In the Hebrew, it is written yod Hey vav Hey. And it is pronounced Yahweh because our father's name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. So I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. And there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. You see, this is one thing about the God that you and I serve. He does nothing in secret. He reveals all the things in his word to his people, to his children who are in intimate relationships with him through his Holy Spirit. He says, I have not spoken in secret. So it's not all about having secret knowledge. God says, no, I want to reveal the truth to you. Truth is never spoken in secret. Truth sets free because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But secret knowledge binds people in many instances, as we will see on this video. In Isaiah 48 verse 16, God says, Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. So, if you understand God has not spoken in secret, then who is the one trying to do things in the secret? Of course, the enemy. And he uses even some Christians regarding this because people are being deceived as they do not know what's actually happening. Now, the importance of secret knowledge was a fundamental element of Gnosticism, a heresy that arose in the first and second centuries and plagued the early church. 
For instance, the Apostle Paul apparently was concerned with Gnostic tendencies that had arisen in the Colossian church. Gnosticism taught that special knowledge either brought salvation or elevated one spiritually. In other words, that you could be saved. You see, Gnosticism or Gnosticism, however you uh, should uh, pronounce it, believes that you can be saved by your knowledge regarding any specific thing or by being elevated spiritually. It's got nothing to do with what the Bible teaches on how we must get saved. So this probably was at least part of Paul's warning in Colossians 2 verse 8 and possibly 1 Timothy 6 verse 20. So let us read Colossians 2 verse 8 where Paul says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And I tell you today, my brother and sister, as we go through this video, you can make your own decision whether the flat earth view is according to the word of God and whether it is a philosophy and vain deceit, which is after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. You will have to make your own decision after today. And in 1 Timothy 6, verse 20 and 21, Paul says, O Timothy, Keep that which is committed to thy trust, meaning the word of God, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. See, and as you will see also, the people believing that the earth is flat, they decide how science should be uh, seen or how science should be practiced. And through that, many people are erring concerning the faith. So this warning that Paul gave in Colossians 2 verse 8 and also in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20 and 21 is applicable to us as disciples of Christ to this very day. Many flat earthers claim that since coming to embrace, look at this now, many flat earthers claim that since coming to embrace the belief that the earth is flat, they feel much closer to God and read the scriptures with much more understanding than before. There are many claims of salvation after coming to believe that the earth is flat. This emphasis on false cosmology is dangerously close to this element of Gnosticism, if not an outright practice of it, because they say they got saved by believing the earth is flat. You cannot get saved by believing the earth is flat. How can you be saved according to the word of God? John 1 verse 12 and 13 says, But as many as received him, referring to Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Not believing that the earth is flat. Them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the way that you can get saved by believing on the name of Jesus Christ, by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I say, if you have not yet done that, at the end of this video will be a prayer that you can pray to receive the Lord Jesus in your life by believing on his name, not believing that the earth is flat. That cannot save you. That is Gnosticism, saying that you can be saved by your knowledge regarding certain things. And then Romans 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. My brother and sister, this is the only way that you can be saved. You cannot be saved by saying, I believe the earth is flat. That saved me. No, 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 no. The only way that this book says that we can be saved is by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on his name, by professing the Lord Jesus Christ with our mouths, and by believing that God has raised him from the dead, physically, with flesh and bones, as we read in the Bible. If you do not do that, you cannot say you are saved. By believing that the earth is flat, you are not saved. 
That does not bring along salvation. You're playing with eternity if you say, I got saved by believing the earth is flat. Because then that means your Savior is not Jesus Christ. You, then your Savior is a flat earth. And I can tell you today, the flat earth cannot be a Savior. There is only one. His name is Jesus Christ. Gnosticism from ancient Greek, Gnostikos, having knowledge, is a collection of religious ideas and systems which originated in the late 1st century CE among Jewish and early Christian sects. These various groups emphasized personal spiritual knowledge, gnosis, over the orthodox teachings, traditions and authority of the church. Viewing material existence as flawed or evil, Gnostic cosmogony generally presents a distinction, look at this now, between a supreme hidden God and a malevolent. Now, malevolent means somebody wishing to do evil to others. So they say their view is that there is a distinction between a supreme hidden God and a malevolent lesser divinity, a lesser God, and this God wishes to do evil to others. Now look at the blue part, sometimes associated with the Yahweh of the Old Testament. So Gnosticism says that they believe in a higher hidden God, a supreme hidden God who stands against Yahweh. So you and I who say we are Christians, we know our God in the Bible is Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And according to them, they say this lesser divinity is responsible for creating the material universe. Gnostics considered the principal element of salvation to be direct knowledge of the supreme divinity in the form of mystical or esoteric insight. You see, hidden knowledge, occult, because the word occult means hidden. Many Gnostic texts deal not in concepts of sin and repentance, as the Bible does, but with illusion and enlightenment. You hear so many people also in the New Age movement speaking about being illuminated and uh, going after being uh, uh, enlightened and they want to have this enlightenment and they want illumination, etc., etc. It comes from the same root, from the kingdom of darkness. And the problem is now that many of the people saying they started believing in the flat earth and that got them closer to God, uh, they are being misled. Because believing in a flat earth cannot bring you closer to the God of the Bible. It's pulling you closer to the supreme being that the Gnostics believed in and who is in direct contradiction to Yahweh that we read about in the Bible. So most definitely not the God that you and I believe in. Some flat earthers also fashion themselves to be experts on science and the methodology of science. Consequently, they think of themselves as competent to dictate to scientists, both godly and ungodly scientists. Because my brother and sister, remember one thing, not all scientists are unbelievers. Not all scientists are atheists. There are many Christian scientists out there who know that God is the author of all science. The problem is most of the world does not want to acknowledge God in science, whereas God is the author of all science. And many Christian uh, scientists do believe in God and they are in a relationship with God because they see God in science. They know that God is the one who created all science and they acknowledge that. So don't think all scientists are unbelievers or atheists or whatever the case may be. But consequently, these flat earthers think of themselves as competent to dictate to scientists, both godly and ungodly, on how science ought to be conducted. You see, according to them. But their definitions and practice of science appear to be formulated to make science as generally understood impossible. See, they've got their own ideas, and if you do not agree with them, sorry, you are wrong, they are right. And that's just there where the blockages come. Whereas Romans 12 verse 3 in the Bible teaches us, 
For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So these people thinking they are better than all the scientists out there, uh, they're actually contradicting this verse. And yet many of these flat earthers say, but they're Christians as well, but they're disobedient to this verse. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 2 says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. See, so many of these people saying, but I know how this is supposed to be. All the rest of the world is wrong. I am right and all that. The Bible says you know nothing yet as you ought to know according to the word of God. This author proceeds to write, The fear is that if one admits that any part of the Bible is not literal, then one is free to interpret any and all the Bible in a non-literal sense. But this fear is unwarranted, for some parts of the Bible clearly are not literal, that we all see and that we all know and that we all agree about. For instance, the Bible contains many figures of speech, idioms, similes and metaphors. In addition, some passages of the Bible, such as in the prophetic books, contain much imagery. All these are non-literal uses. However, these non-literal elements generally are missing from the historical narrative in the Bible. So we learn to differentiate and discern when we have to do with similes, metaphors, imagery, but also with the historical narrative. And the closer you get to God, and the more you are in a personal, intimate relationship with Him, studying His Word on a daily basis, speaking to God in your prayer room and your prayer closet, what happens? You start to discern more and more through the Holy Spirit teaching you which parts are specifically historical narrative and which are just similes, metaphors, prose, because it's beautiful. The Word of God is beautiful. And we can read it as it is written and understand. Yes, this is written as a metaphor. Yes, this is written as a simile. Yes, this is written as prose. Yes, this is written as historical narrative. Because the Holy Spirit reveals these things to us. And so we grow in discerning what part of the Bible contains what kind of genre. It isn't very difficult to determine what genre one is reading in Scripture. It is intellectually dishonest for those with an agenda to read non-literally passages of the Bible that clearly are meant to be taken literally. But he also proceeds to say it is intellectually lazy for Christians in their fear to insist on a strictly literal approach to all of Scripture. Many of the biblical texts that flat earthers use are taken out of context. One example is Job 38 verse 14, which reads, It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. What is the antecedent of the pronoun it? The antecedent is the earth found in the previous verse. Flat earthers typically argue that in ancient times, the clay that was changed by a seal was flat. So therefore, the earth must be flat. They take this verse and they say, you see, in ancient times, when they took a round ball of clay and put a seal in it, let me show you a picture what happened to that uh, clay then. It was pushed down with the seal. So it was a little round ball of clay. Then it was pushed down with the seal and it looked like this. And so the flat earthers say, you see, Job 38 verse 14 says, this is what the earth looks like. It was pushed down. So it is flat like clay that was pushed down by the seal. But they don't take note of the two verses just before Job 38 verse 14 that says, uh, in verse 12 and 13, Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it, referring to the morning, might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? So you see, they don't take note of verses 12 and 13, but they use verse 14 to say, it is changed like the seal, the clay in the seal, so that means it is flat, it must be flat. Uh, okay, so does that mean then, uh, that you've seen the morning take holds of the ends of the earth to shake the wicked out of the earth? 
No, very clearly verse 12, 13 and 14 are metaphors which are used here. It does not mean that the earth is pushed flat like a clay seal like it was used in ancient times as I showed you previously. Another irony is that while flat earthers regularly dismiss any teaching on scripture that they disagree with, as mere teachings of men, that's always what they say, if they don't agree with a certain part of scripture, they say, oh, it's mere teachings of men. They readily embrace the teachings of men with whom they do agree, even though that may be against scripture, or spoken or written by evolutionists, gnostics, or atheists. They're most willing to accept that as long as it agrees with their view. But if scripture does not agree with them, then scripture is just the mere teachings of men. And they do not want to listen to that anymore. And my brother and sister, if you call yourself a true Holy Spirit filled Bible believing child of God, how can you go along with people like this? Because 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All. You cannot tear out any part and say, no, this is just mere teachings of men. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All of scripture. So do not go along with people who say certain parts of the Bible are mere teachings of men. Yes, God used about, they say, 44 to 45 different authors over a period of 1,400 years approximately to write down the books which we see and have as the Bible today. But God was still the one behind those authors. He was still the author of all authors. He wrote through them. His Holy Spirit commanded them and told them what to write. So nothing in the Word of God is just the mere teachings of men. The arguments for flat earth that began to arise in the 19th century didn't originate with Christians at all. Instead, the belief that the Bible teaches the earth is flat first arose among skeptics who used this false charge as a bludgeon to intimidate the church and attempt to discredit the Bible. So my brother and sister, so the whole view regarding the earth being flat did not originate from the church at all, did not originate among Christians at all, but among skeptics who tried to discredit the Bible. So how can you and I as Christian brothers and sisters try to be part of people like that? The root is bad. So the Bible says if the root of something is bad, the fruit will be bad. So now we see that the actual root of the flat earth theory comes from people who try to discredit the word of God and not trying to prove the word of God. So how can you be part of a group like that? Now what does the Bible teach us? What should we do? 1 Timothy 6 verse 3 to 5 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, Supposing that gain is godliness. Now look at the red part. From such, withdraw thyself. Don't be part of that. If you now know the root of this whole flat earth view is bad. Regrettably, few Christians refuted this lie at the time. That was in the 19th century. And some Christians even accepted this false notion and took it up as a badge of honor. This author proceeds to say, I suspect that Samuel Robotham, the founder of the modern flat earth movement in the 19th century, he lived between 1816 and 1884, wasn't earnest in his claims. Rather, I believe that Robotham did this as a cruel joke. If so, then he must have had perverse delight in fooling so many people because it's nearly 200 years later now and people are still being fooled and being deceived by this 
deception that he brought in. This author proceeds to write, Finally, I have learned of the corrosive effect that the flat earth movement is having on Christians who have been sucked up into it. I've heard from wives whose husbands have been turned into surly, paranoid, negative men because of their belief in all sorts of conspiracies, including this conspiracy that the earth is actually flat and that the truth is being held away from the people and that the earth is not round at all according to them. So they've been turned into negative beings by starting to believe this. Can this be from God then? I've heard from husbands whose wives no longer give them due respect because the wives are convinced that their husbands are deceived by believing that the earth is actually still round and hence can't be viewed as the spiritual leaders in their families. So again, this whole thing about the flat earth is causing division in homes, causing ladies not to be obedient to the word of God in submitting themselves to their husbands anymore. So can this be from God then? Because Matthew 12 verse 33 says, Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. And now we see that this tree of the flat earth, the fruit thereof causes division in homes, in marriages, breakups in homes, marriages and even churches. So if the root is bad, then the fruit is bad. Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What are the works of the flesh? Which are these? Adultery, uncleanness. You can go and read the rest as well. I'm just noting a few specific ones. Hatred. In the Greek, that word also means hostility or opposition. Variance. It also means quarrel, contention or debate. Emulations. It also means jealousy or malice. Strife. Also meaning factions or division. Seditions, meaning division or disunion, and heresies, and such like. After which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And yet many of these people believing in the flat earth theory are doing exactly these things. They are causing hatred among family members and even church members, hostility and opposition coming among people, variance, quarrel, contention, debates, malice, strife, factions, division, disunion and heresies. This is what they are causing with this now. And Paul says very clearly that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So my brother and sister, where do you and I find ourselves in this whole matter? This author proceeds to write, The flat earth movement is tearing families and churches apart. Many flat earthers leave their churches in search of another church that teaches what they consider to be true biblical cosmology. Unable to find a flat earth church because it is not in line with scripture, many flat earthers simply stop attending church. All these attitudes and actions directly violate God's commands and will for our lives. And we know Jesus warned us in Matthew 12 verse 25 where he said, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So what is Satan trying to cause with the flat earth theory that houses, marriages and churches will fall because they are being divided as a result of this disunion, division, debates and all this malice and heresies being thrown around? Contrary to what most people think, the earth was known to be spherical, in other words, round like a ball, in ancient times. The ancient Greeks even calculated its circumference with surprising accuracy. Evolutionists often falsely accuse creationists of believing in a flat earth. Remember you and I, who believe that God created the earth by speaking a word? We are creationists. We are called creationists. So evolutionists often falsely accuse creationists of believing in a flat earth. It's not true. But neither history nor modern scholarship supports the claim that Christians ever widely believed that the earth was flat. And the Bible doesn't teach it. 
Christianity has often been held responsible for promoting the flat earth theory. Yet it was only a handful of so-called intellectual scholars throughout the centuries claiming to represent the church who held to a flat earth view. Most of these were ignored by the church, yet somehow their writings made it into early history books as being the official Christian viewpoint. Jeffrey Burton Russell is a professor of history at the University of California in Santa Barbara. He says in his book, Inventing the Flat Earth, written for the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's journey to America in 1492, that through antiquity and up to the time of Columbus, nearly unanimous scholarly opinion pronounced the earth spherical. But Russell says, The flat earth mythology flourished most between 1870 and 1920 and had to do with the ideological setting created by struggles over evolution. This is where the whole thing happened and where it all started. He says the flat earth myth was an ideal way to dismiss the ideas of a religious past in the name of modern science. The Bible, of course, teaches the correct shape of the earth. Isaiah 40 verse 22 says God sits above the circle of the earth. The Hebrew word for circle can also mean a sphere. Also, Luke 17 verse 34 to 36 depicts Christ's second coming as happening while some are asleep at night and others are working at daytime activities in the field, an indication of a rotating earth with day and night at the same time. Members of the Flat Earth Society claim to believe the earth is flat. Walking around on the planet's surface, it looks and feels flat, so they deem all evidence to the contrary such as satellite photos of Earth as a sphere, to be fabrications of a round Earth conspiracy orchestrated by NASA and other government agencies. The leading flat earther theory holds that Earth is a disk with the Arctic Circle in the center and Antarctica a 150 foot tall wall of ice around the rim of the Earth. NASA employees, they say, guard this ice wall to prevent people from climbing over and falling off the disk. Yet nobody has ever shown a picture of these ice walls and people stopping other people from climbing over. In keeping with their skepticism of NASA, known flat earther conspiracy theorist Nathan Thompson recently approached a man he said was a NASA employee in a Starbucks in mid-May 2017. In a YouTube video of the exchange, Thompson, founder of the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion page, shouted that he had proof the Earth is flat, apparently saying an astronaut drowning was that proof and that NASA is lying. So my brother and sister, how do they believe what does Earth look like according to them? There is a picture now of what the Flat Earthers believe what the Earth looks like with this circle, like a flat pancake, with, you know, the Arctic Circle right in the center now, so there is no North Pole anymore, because it's now the Middle Pole, actually, and Antarctica, which is actually the South Pole on a globe, is no South Pole anymore, it is now a rim of ice all around the Earth. Yet you and I, who know, we've seen all these photos, because it's been taken by even Christian scientists and Christian astronauts, as we will also see. These are pictures of what the Earth looks like from the north. That's the Arctic Circle at the top and at the bottom, Antarctica at the South Pole. Earth's day and night cycle is explained by flat earthers positing that the sun and moon are spheres. Interesting that they still believe that the sun and moon are spheres, yet the earth isn't. And that the sun and moon are measuring 32 miles, that is 52 kilometers each, and that they move in circles 3,000 miles, that's 4,828 kilometers above the plane of the earth. Stars, they say, move in a plane 3,100 miles up. In other words, the stars are 100 miles higher than the sun and the moon. 
Like spotlights, these celestial spheres illuminate different portions of the planet in a 24-hour cycle. Flat earthers believe there must also be an invisible anti-moon that obscures the moon during lunar eclipses, because we know it is the shadow of the earth obscuring the moon during lunar eclipses but they say no no that is not the shadow of the moon because the you know because the sun and the moon are above the earth traveling in circles above this flat earth so it can't be the shadow of the earth so there must be a secret anti-moon somewhere and that anti-moon that obscures the moon during lunar eclipses if we look at one of the pictures of their view of the path of a flat earth sun we can see, remember, there are different uh, tropics. We have the Tropic of Capricorn, we have the Equator, we have the Tropic of Cancer, and the sun moves around and around above this earth. Now, if you look at this calculation that somebody did regarding this, it says, if the sun on the flat earth moved at the same speed of 1,040 miles per hour all year, it would take 24 hours to move around the equator, 18 hours to move around the Tropic of Cancer, and 30 hours to move around the Tropic of Capricorn. To maintain a 24-hour day, the speed of the sun would have to decrease down to 771 miles per hour at the Tropic of Cancer and increase to 1,322 miles per hour at the Tropic of Capricorn. There is no scientific explanation for this, for a sun increasing and decreasing its speed, because we all know that the sun has got a specific speed in which it travels, and all the planets that God created, including Earth, travels at a specific speed. I'm not a scientist. You can go and do your own research regarding this, but God is very specific. He's not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. So he does it in specific ways and he also created all the stars as the Bible says the way he wanted them. Furthermore, and this is another interesting view that they hold, Earth's gravity is an illusion, they say. So they say gravity does not exist. Objects do not accelerate downward as we know with gravity. Everything falling down, if you throw something up, it will still fall down as a result of gravity. They say, no, 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 that's not true. Objects do not accelerate downward. Instead, the disk of Earth accelerates upward at 32 feet per second squared. That is 9.8 meters per second squared, driven up by what they call a mysterious force called dark energy. You see, if you can't explain something, just give it a name. Call it a mysterious force that's called dark energy. Currently, there is disagreement among flat earthers about whether or not Einstein's theory of relativity permits Earth to accelerate upward indefinitely without the planet eventually surpassing the speed of light. So everything is just moving upwards, according to them, at 9.8 meters per second squared, going up and up and up forever. Then there's the conspiracy theory. Flat earthers believe photos of the globe are photoshopped. GPS devices are rigged to make airplane pilots think they are flying in straight lines around a sphere when they are actually flying in circles above a disk. The motive for world government's concealment of the true shape of the earth has not been ascertained, but flat earthers believe it is probably financial. In a nutshell, it would logically cost much less to fake a space program than to actually have one. So those in on the conspiracy profit from the funding NASA and other space agencies receive from the government. The Flat Earther website's frequently asked questions page explains. Yet, if you go and do your own research regarding the oldest remaining Earth globe upon the Earth, you will read that the Earth Apple or Earth Apple of Martin Beheim is the oldest surviving terrestrial globe made between 1491 and 1493. The Americas are not yet included on that globe. Why? As Columbus only found the Americas in 1492. So my brother and sister, you know what? So there were already depictions of the Earth as a globe 
even before the Americas were found, long before NASA ever existed. So if that was already a lie way back then, uh, then the conspiracy did not just only start with NASA, who photoshopped the photos of the Earth as a globe and who uh, rigged all the GPSs and all these poor airplane pilots thinking they are flying around a globe while actually just flying above this flat earth. Shame. You know, all these people are so being deceived. They've got this veil over their eyes and only flat earthers have the truth and only they can see the truth. Really? Strangely, Flat Earth Society Vice President Michael Wilmore, an Irishman, and the Society's President, a 35-year-old Virginia-born Londoner named Daniel Shenton, both think the evidence for global warming is strong, despite much of this evidence coming from satellite data gathered by NASA. So they don't believe the photos that NASA gives proving that the Earth is round, but they do believe NASA's view of the global warming. There is division in their own camp then. The kingpin of the round Earth conspiracy, according to them. They also accept evolution and most other mainstream tenets of science. So they do not believe in one specific thing, but they go along with many of the mainstream stuff of science, but they also believe in evolution and they believe in global warming, but they don't believe the earth is around. The Flat Earth Society is an active organization currently led by a Virginian man named Daniel Shenton. Though Shenton believes in evolution and global warming, he and his hundreds if not thousands of followers worldwide also believe that the earth is a disc that you can fall off of. But what does the Bible teach us? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 16 the read as follows. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. How can you as a Christian yoke yourself together with an evolutionist, a person who does not believe in creation of the world according to the word of God, by the word of God, speaking a word, so how can you yoke yourself together with unbelievers? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. There is no way that you as a Bible-believing Christian can yoke yourself together with people like these that do not believe in the truth of the word, but you stand with them. What is God going to tell you when you stand before his throne one day? Some people believe in the flat earth because they have been convinced that the Bible teaches it. So they believe that by denying the flat earth, people are denying God's word. If the Bible taught the earth is flat, their argument would be sound, yes. But the Bible does no such thing. So appealing to biblical inerrancy for non-existent flat earth proof texts makes no sense. This is the classic fallacy of begging the question or assuming the conclusion in the premises. The Bible does not teach a flat earth, my brother and sister. Many flat earth believers circulate lists or memes that allege that there are 200 Bible verses supporting a flat earth. The list can be found in many places online and has a history unknown to most flat earth believers, being originally compiled by people who were trying to mock the Bible, not support it. And again, my brother and sister, how can you stand together with such groups who try to discredit the Bible and who try to mock the Bible, not support it, and thereby quoting these 200 verses they say that proves that the earth is flat and not round. This author proceeds to write, We sourced the list from a site called Flat Earth Doctrine, but it is basically the same as many others. However, this oft-parroted list 
contains the usual scholarly sloppiness and leaps of logic that we have come to expect from flat earthers. You see, they make assumptions regarding certain texts or certain pieces of texts that are not true. Most of the verses have absolutely nothing to do with the shape of the earth. An important consideration is what earth, irets in Hebrew, means in the Bible. And it can mean different things depending on context. For example, in Genesis 1 verse 1, earth, irets, the planet is being discussed in contrast to the heavens. But on day 3, God made dry land appear and called it earth, also irets, in contrast to the waters that he called seas. When it comes to the verses cited by flat earthers, we should understand that the passages are likely to be talking about the land, not the planet. So one of the verses that flat earthers quote is Deuteronomy 4 verse 19, which read as follows. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. This is one of the 200 verses, they say, that proves that the earth is flat. The fact that other nations worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars. This author proceeds to say, okay, so there are creation worshippers. How does this prove a flat earth? They are poisoning the well by a totally baseless link of spherical earth with a pagan religion. After all, one reason that bibliosceptics claim that the Bible teaches a flat earth is that they believe that the surrounding pagan nations did. So the flat earthers say, because some of the other pagan nations believed in the flat earth, that is why the Bible teaches a flat earth. But it's not true. But did the pagan nations believe in a flat earth, some of them? Oh yes, they did. Let's look at the Babylonian view of the cosmos. This is their three-tiered universe with the waters above and then the flat earth and waters above and below the earth. The Babylonian view of the cosmos, not the biblical view. There's another photo there, a flat earth on water. The Babylonia universe was a three-tier structure with a flat earth floating on waters under the heaven, with the heaven above it then. And on the right there you have an ancient stone that depicts how the earth was thought of by the ancient Babylonians. There is another depiction of the ancient view of a flat earth. And this is a picture that I took many years ago from an old biblical encyclopedia showing a Babylonian picture of the universe. So this was the Babylonian view of the earth, a flat earth with the heavens above it in three tiers according to them. And what does the Bible say in Jeremiah 10 verse 2? Thus saith the Lord, saith who? Saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So, with the flat earth theory, people have now learned the way of the heathen. So, they brought in the heathen way, the Babylonian view, and now they say, but the Bible teaches this because of the fact that those who worshipped creation, they taught this. So, this means that the Bible also teaches this. No, it does not teach a flat earth. Another one of the arguments is earth has pillars and hangs on nothing, quoting 1 Samuel 2 verse 8 and Job 26 verse 7. Yes, it hangs on nothing. We now have many pictures of the big blue marble from space and it indeed doesn't hang on anything, as the Bible says, but that does not prove that it is a flat earth. But why? I ask the question, why does not even one flat earth picture or depiction on the internet show any pillars under the flat earth disc if they really believe that that is what the Bible literally means? You see, they all say, oh, you know, this is one of the proofs that one of the 200 verses saying that the Bible teaches the flat earth is that the Bible stands on pillars, yet not one of their own pictures shows the flat earth with pillars below it. 
And you know, if the earth has pillars, but it keeps on moving upwards, and the sun and the moon and the stars also keeps on moving upwards, does it mean it will just go into infinity and beyond and never stop moving upwards? What does it need the pillars for? Are the pillars just hanging below the earth then? You see, again, it's a metaphor. It's not physical pillars that the earth stands upon because the Bible also says that heaven has pillars upon which it stands. Again, a metaphor. But again, the flat earthers want to use these verses trying to prove that the Bible teaches a flat earth. Now, my brother and sister, the Bible does not teach a flat earth. Another one of the arguments, earth has ends. Deuteronomy 28 verse 49, you can read all those verses that they, they try to use as proof. Now, since the earth here in these verses means the land, the ends of the earth are the shorelines. But even without this, a spherical earth has ends in a sense because it is finite. The ends in this case would be the two points at the end of diameters, roughly 12,742 kilometers apart. This is no different than saying the flat circular disk has ends, as they claim. The missing South Pole. Another problem lies with the modern flat earth claims that the earth is encircled by an enormous Antarctic ring due south from everywhere. And what do we make of the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station? It was built by the United States and is manned year round and has a web camera that's accessible anywhere in the world via the internet. You yourself can go and watch it. There is no South Pole on a flat earth. So if the earth was flat, what happened to South? South cannot be South from any specific point anymore. There is no South Pole. So there is no South on a flat earth. Astronauts in space. The International Space Station has now gone around the Earth over 100,000 times since its inception, carrying with it more than 220 different astronauts over the past 15 years. One astronaut, Colonel Jeff Williams, has recently returned from his fourth trip to space. Not only has Colonel Williams set the record for cumulative days in space, 534 days, but he is also an outspoken Christian. He's not a heathen. He's not an unbeliever. He's not a Gnostic. He is an outspoken Christian. He and other astronauts have taken thousands of pictures and hundreds of hours of videos of the Earth from space, many of which are available online. You can patch these together seamlessly to make a montage of the entire Earth. And it is demonstrably a sphere. All of these scientists and astronauts are not lying, my brother and sister. If the earth is flat, one has to reject mountains of clear observational evidence. From the shadow of the earth on the moon to the fact that people in the northern and southern hemispheres see different stars, none of it can be true. You have to reject experimental science and nearly all physical science going back centuries. You have to reject Christian scholarship going back to the beginning of the religion. You have to reject the testimonies of thousands of scientists, including outspoken Christians, and the personal observations of billions of people who happen to live on the other side of the world from you. Over 2,000 years ago, the Greek philosopher Aristotle had it all figured out. The fact that earth is round has been common knowledge ever since. In his book On the Heavens, he wrote, Again, our observations of the stars make it evident, not only that the earth is circular, but also that it is a circle of no great size. For quite a small change of position to south or north, causes a manifest alteration of the horizon. In other words, you see different sets of stars in the night sky depending on where you are. 
the sky over the northern hemisphere is not the same as the sky over the southern hemisphere. If the earth was flat, then at any given time we would all see the same stars, and we don't. The globe has been clearly understood for thousands of years. Indeed, this was one of the first cosmic facts to be worked out correctly by ancient people because evidence of a spherical earth is visible to the naked eye. By the time of the philosopher Socrates and his student Plato, many Greeks understood that the earth could only be a sphere. Sailors would have noticed that the sails of approaching ships appeared before the hulls of the ships became visible, because the surface of the sea is slightly curved, like the surface of an enormous ball. When you sail toward a ship, island or lighthouse, their tallest points are the first thing to peek up over the curve of the horizon, because one of the quickest things that the flat earthers will say to you when you start to speak to them about this, they will say, but where is the curve? Where is the curve? Look at the ship on the sea. You only see it, its mast first and then it comes up because it comes over the curve of the earth. There is a picture and you know how it works. So if you are standing to the left of that picture and on, on that lighthouse and you look over the sea, you will see the top of the mast of the ship first and then as it comes closer, the ship will become visible in its entirety because it comes over the curve of the earth. Flat earth beliefs vary but usually involve a large disc-shaped world with a relatively tiny sun and moon circling above it like lamps above a table. Flat earth maps rearrange the continents and seas to radiate outward from the North Pole, which is imagined to be at the center of the disc. Everything we think of as the southern hemisphere is spread out around the outer circumference. It is usually claimed that Antarctica does not exist at all. Instead, the entire disk is encircled by a vast wall of ice that we mistake for a frozen southern continent. You see, we are all so deceived. We are all making so many mistakes. All these people across the world, they are all wrong. They just think, mistakenly think, that there is a frozen southern continent. Only the flat earthers have the truth, they say. Really? Do you really believe that, my brother and sister? Flat earthers believe our day and night cycle is explained by the fact the sun and the moon are spheres, as we said earlier, measuring 51 kilometers that move in circles 4,828 kilometers above the plane of the planet. A shift from scientific consensus, which states the sun is 149.6 million kilometers from Earth. If it was closer than that, Earth would be burnt to a cinder. The sun moves in circles around the North Pole, they say. When it is over your head, it's day. When it's not, it's night, they say. The sun acts like a spotlight and shines downward as it moves, the society explained. The apparent effect of the sun rising and setting is usually explained as a perspective effect. This is now an explanation of the seasons in flat earth theory. So they say if you see the sun rising and setting, it's just a perspective effect. It's just an effect that you see. It's not really true because the sun goes around and around and around above our heads. So you just thinking you're seeing the sun setting and coming up again. You see, you're being deceived according to them. Now, if a conspiracy was so powerful as to hide itself successfully forever, as they actually believe, it would surely also be able to stop flat earthers from constantly blabbing about it on the internet, newspapers and television. Finally, it is unclear what could possibly motivate the sustained worldwide effort and expense necessary to conceal the shape of the earth? Why would people go to all this trouble worldwide? 
to conceal the truth from the people. What do they gain from that? All routes for planes and ships would be different on a flat earth, especially in the southern hemisphere. According to many flat earth maps, the shortest route between South America and Australia would now cross over the North Pole instead of just flying due east. A conspiracy to conceal the flatness of the earth would therefore have to include hundreds of thousands of airline pilots and ship captains, as well as all governments, space agencies, map makers and Antarctic explorers, of whom thousands upon thousands are themselves outspoken confessing Christians. You see, if the earth is a globe, a sphere, as we know it is, look at this picture now. You can see South America down there. So if you get into an airplane and you depart from South America and you fly due east, you would land in Africa. If you depart from Africa and fly due east, you would land in Australia. And if you depart Australia and you fly due east, you would land in South America again. That is what they say pilots think they are doing. But you see, pilots are being deceived, they say, uh, because pilots... The, the GPSs they use have been rigged and, you know, they only believe they are flying around a sphere, but th they've been deceived in believing that. But this is the truth of what happens when an airplane flies due east and it will land in all the different continents around the sphere. Now let's take the same trip on a flat earth. If you depart from South America, you would have to fly southeast to land in Africa. And if you depart from Africa, you will have to fly northeast to land in Australia. And if you depart from Australia, you would have to fly southwest to land in South America again. And as you see there, then you would have to cross the North Pole coming from Australia, flying southwest, crossing the North Pole to get to South America. Really? Do you really believe that, my brother and sister? Jeffrey Burton Russell that I quoted earlier showed that flat earth belief was extremely rare in the church. The flat earth's two main proponents were obscure figures named Lactantius, living between 240 and 320 AD, and Cosmos Indicopleustis, who lived in the 6th century. The last name means Voyager to India. However, they, these two men, were hugely outweighed by tens of thousands of Christian theologians, poets, artists, scientists, and rulers who unambiguously affirmed that the earth was round. Where do we see the confirmation of this, that even rulers affirmed that the earth was round? Let's look at this thing called the orb, the emblem of royal power. It was usually made of precious metal and jewels and consisting of a sphere surmounted by a cross. The ball as a symbol of the cosmos or of the universe as a harmonious whole is derived from the ancient Romans who associated it with Jupiter and hence with the emperor as his earthly representative. Christians adapted the symbol by setting a cross above the ball to signify the world dominated by Christianity. Rulers were often depicted with the orb, but the first to hold it in hand at his coronation was the Holy Roman Emperor Henry II in 1014. Thereafter, the imperial apple became an important emblem of the royal power invested in the monarch. And there we have a depiction of Queen Elizabeth I, who lived between 1533 and 1603. You see in her left hand there what they call the Globus Cruciger, which is part of the royal jewels as well. There you have a picture in the top right hand corner, the globe with the cross upon it, depicting earth which is dominated by the christian faith as they said but again a globe that they held in their hand 
not just the flat round piece of something. Even before Christianity, the pagans used the globe as a symbol of authority. Holding it in one's hands or having it under the foot was a clear visual message of established power or supremacy over the world. The Romans appear to have been quite familiar with this symbol as suggested by a 2nd century coin belonging to Emperor Hadrian's reign that carried the Roman god Salus shown with a foot placed on a globe or a 4th century coin from Emperor Constantine I's reign that depicts him with a globe in hand. The spread of Christianity led to modification of the orb symbol with a cross added atop the globe to send across a message about Christ's dominance over the world. It was adopted by powerful Christian rulers and made a part of royal regalia, symbolizing that the emperor or king controlled the world on behalf of the Lord. The symbol is still seen on the national arms of some existing European monarchies. In other words, all those pagans and Christians from the 2nd century onward were in on such a worldwide conspiracy to conceal the true shape of the world. So believers and unbelievers from across the world and across language barriers have been successfully working together as one unit to lie to the world about the shape of the world for all these centuries, even before the time of social media or electronic media or Photoshop or GPS? Do you really believe that? My brother and sister, can you really believe such a lie any longer? Can you really believe that the earth is a flat disk? If you see, but even pagans believe that it was round. Many thousands of years, 2,000 years ago already, the Greeks said it's round. So what are you going to keep on believing? But Tian, what does the Bible say? The Bible does not teach a flat earth, my brother and sister. You can go and look at all the verses they try to quote. If you read it in the context it is written there, you will see there is no reference to a flat earth earth anywhere in the Bible because God created all his planets the same. He created them all to be spheres. The flat earthers say the sun and the moon are spheres but the earth is flat. Really? Let's see what the Bible really tells us about God. At number two, let us now discuss is God limited in any way? What do I mean by that? In Psalm 103 verse 12 we read, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Look at this verse. Read that one just as it is written. As far as the east is from the west, so far, hath he removed our transgressions from us. What does that mean regarding the limitless grace of our God, the limitless forgiveness in his heart? Let's look at this. When you start traveling east around a spherical earth, you can keep on traveling east forever and never reach west. Or you can start traveling west and keep on traveling west forever around the earth. You will never reach east. This is an absolute example of the limitless love, grace and forgiveness of our Lord and Heavenly Father. The flat earth view, on the other hand, limits God's grace and forgiveness to the ice-walled edges of a flat earth earth disk. East and west are now specific points on the disk and do not represent an unending and unlimited love and grace 
any longer because if east is on the one side of that disc and west is on the other side there are two specific points now because remember those are walls and if you go past those walls you will fall down you will fall off because there's no gravity so earth will just move past you and i don't know what will happen happen to you when you fall off will you just hang in space or just disappear into infinity or i don't know because they don't really answer this but the thing is god's grace God's love, God's forgiveness is now being limited. My Christian brother and sister, how can you be part of something like this, believing this, that limits our God? While Revelation 1 verse 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty You see, our God is the almighty God who created heavens and the earth in the way he did with all the planets and all the stars and the way he planned them to be. And now you try to be part of a group which is led by evolutionists, gnostics and atheists and you try to stand with them against your other Christian brothers and sisters. What are you going to tell God one day? Because Malachi 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord. I change not. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is still the same limitless God. Why are you trying to limit him, my brother and sister, by saying the earth is not round? So God's grace cannot go around and around and around the earth anymore because earth is not round anymore if you believe in the flat earth myth. Genesis 1 verse 16 it says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, that is the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now it's interesting to know that the Hebrew word for star is kokob, in the sense of blazing, a star as round or as shining. So there we have some pictures of stars, kokob as round or as shining, the moon and some of the other planets, And again, as I say, even the flat earthers say, yes, they are round, they are spheres, but not the earth. The earth earth is not round. Earth was made totally different. But they stand on the Babylonian view of the earth, not on how God created all his planets. They are all round. They all have the same shape. Now, in conclusion, my brother and sister, please take note of the following few points. If you forget everything else that I might have said on this video, please just think on these few points. Number one, the specific shape of the earth does not define nor ensure your eternal salvation. Number two, you can only be saved by believing in and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said at the beginning of this video, when I'm finished now, there will be a prayer at the end that you can pray to receive the Lord Jesus in your life so that you can then live according to the word of God and also be with him eternally. Number three, believing the earth is flat, but never acknowledging and receiving Jesus Christ as only savior and redeemer by faith in him still ensures eternal hell. You cannot be saved by believing the earth is flat, as I said at the beginning. Number four, are you willing to put your eternity in jeopardy by fighting tooth and nail for a flat earth view while not acknowledging Jesus Christ as Savior? But people say, but I am a Christian believer and I also believe in the flat earth. You're being deceived, my brother and sister. I've shown you enough proof now to let you know you're being pulled in by unbelievers. And the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. When you walk into God's throne room one day, is he going to praise you for fighting for the flat earth view, which instruction or command is given nowhere in the Bible? Or is he going to ask you where the nations are that you were supposed to make disciples of, according to Matthew 28 verse 19. Number five, 
And when you do acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior, are you willing to have the veil removed from your eyes about a so-called worldwide conspiracy to prove the earth is not a globe spanning thousands of years and across countries, regions and languages, and in all that time including thousands upon thousands of pagans, heathens, atheists, Christians, pilots, scientists, boat captains, government officials and Christian church leaders? What caused them all to keep on propagating the same lie for thousands of years in such incredible unity even after some of them became true believers? And you know John 16 verse 8 says the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin, righteousness and judgment. So the moment that a person really becomes convicted by the Holy Spirit of sin, he is also convicted of the fact that a lie is sin. So will these people, even after becoming true believers, keep on lying, sinning? What did they profit by that? Number six, do you believe that the lie is stronger than the truth? Would true Holy Spirit-filled lovers of God still keep on covering for and fighting for a round earth if that was a lie? Why has not one such Christian scientist or astronaut or pilot ever come forward to say that it was all a lie, that he or she was present where such meetings were held across the world, perpetuating and planning the strategy to fool all people upon the earth into believing the earth was round? Because it is not possible for such a worldwide conspiracy to just keep on feeding itself and strengthening itself supernaturally if there is not very meticulous planning being done across the world and meetings being held among all these heathen, pagan, Christian, Gnostic, unbelievers, evolutionist role players all over the world. And with all the knowledge we have today and the technology that is available, can such meetings really be kept secret from all people across the world without even one little leak? Because it's interesting how many other things are being leaked to the world, yet this one conspiracy, oh, this is so well kept among even pagans, heathens, unbelievers, Christians. It's so well kept. There's not even one leak confirming that it's a lie. Number seven. No, my brother and sister in Christ. In the end, this is all just another instrument in the hands of Satan to cause division in the body of of Christ. Please don't be pulled into it. And if you are in it, please get out of it. Because remember what Jesus said in Matthew 12 verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If you keep on standing with the flat earth believers, and they are not Christian believers. They, the root of this is not from people believing in the Bible. The root comes from people trying to discredit the Bible. If you stand with those people, you will also start to fall away from the truth of the rest of the word, as I've shown earlier. So don't be part of that. And I also quote 1 Timothy 6 verse 3 to 5 again, that says, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, also godliness in your marriage, godliness regarding unity in marriage, and unity in the church of Christ, and all that. If you don't live according to that anymore, such a person is proud. And remember, pride caused Satan to be thrown out of heaven. Such a person is proud knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strifes of words. And this is what the flat earth people do. They doubt about questions and strifes of words. They just want to debate all these things and try and prove everybody else is wrong and only they are right. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, 
perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Stop being part of that. And destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Again, look at the blue part. From such, withdraw thyself. My brother and sister, after having watched this video, if you have come so far to watch this whole video to the end, you will never be able to stand before the throne of God one day and say, Lord, I did not know that I was being pulled into a heresy. Because remember what Jesus said in Matthew 22 verse 29, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. This includes, we err, not knowing the scriptures. And so when people say, but that verse says the earth is flat, and that verse says, we don't know our scriptures well enough to say, no, it doesn't. No, that's a metaphor. No, that's part of the prose. No, that's not historical narrative. You see, we do not know our scriptures. And because we do not know our scriptures, we do not know how to discern the truth from the lie. And Satan keeps us bound, even in this flat earthing. And marriages are broken up. Churches are broken up because of this. Can this be from God then? Can this be from God then? We must test the spirit. And the spirit of the flat earth is not the spirit coming from God. It's not the Holy Spirit of God. It's a spirit of division. And Jesus said, every house divided against itself shall not stand. Satan is trying to divide your house, my brother and sister. He's trying to divide your church. Withdraw yourself from these things according to the word of God. And live in a true, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because remember, He is not a dead God. As Jesus said in Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18, I'm the first and the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, that you are the Almighty. Thank you, Lord, that your grace is limitless. Your love is limitless. Your forgiveness is limitless. And therefore, Father, we know that you have given us a round earth as you've given us a round sun, a round moon, a round planets, the rest of space that you created, Lord, all your planets that you've given us, which you call by name according to the word of God. We know you're a God of order and not of division and of heresy. So, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will touch the hearts of brothers and sisters watching this video. If they still believe in the lie of the flat earth, that they will be pulled back to the truth of the word of God, that they will start to discern the lie and that they will stand up for the truth and really reach out to you and not fight about the belief regarding the flat earth any longer, but fight to save souls before Jesus Christ returns. And Lord Jesus, we know your coming is very close at hand. So we who look forward to seeing you, the spirit and the bride says, come. So we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen.